please note that this video contains spoilers. No wolf movie thoughts. So that opening with the whole, well not the exact opening, but one of the first scenes, the woman escapes from the outpost, fearing for her life if she stays, and, you know, the outer frontier guards, whatever, capture her, and they're going to kill her, death by giant razor blade, in ritual, for some reason. And they try to undress her even more than she already was. I'm not entirely sure what the point of that was. Nor am I sure why they constantly punch her. She didn't seem like she was, you know, she might have been trying to get away, but she didn't seem like she was at all doing a good job of, you know, actually wrestling free of all these men. So, Beowulf kills a ton of them in a scene that just gets, you know, more unbelievable and just B-movie as it goes along. You know, first he starts out with the dual-wielding, you know, relatively quick-firing crossbows, then, you know, he starts throwing things at people and you know, when they get all the way up, he starts kicking them, never actually leaving the horse at first. That is just brilliant. Excuse me, so after all this, he leaves on the horse with her, and she's like, I don't want to go back, you know, it'll kill me. So she leaves the horse, quite cleverly shot too, because suddenly she's just gone. That actually, that really worked, you know, I was like, did she disappear? Where is she? You know, and then, ah, oh, she jumped off the horse, she ran back, and they kill her in a much quicker fashion than before. I guess that was the whole reason they were following. They just wanted to make sure that if she did jump off his horse, they were going to kill her. Seems like they could have just stayed back at their posts, but whatever. Doesn't that kind of make that entire scene entirely pointless, other than the fact that it showcases his nice, you know, diverse weaponry. I love how everything he grabs, you know, like, either morphs into something else, or, you know, yeah, just, you know, he's, he's like the blade of, I don't know, I guess, supernatural monsters. Yeah, so, you know, and he doesn't even seem like, he doesn't even, like, go back and kill more of them. That was my thought. They just saw this guy kill, let's say, 20, 30 of their guys just to get her back. Now they've killed her. I guess he doesn't, you know, he can't actually rescue her again, but he might go back for revenge. You know, that... It didn't seem like he had to kill a bunch of them just to save her. You know, if he really wanted to, he could have maybe, I don't know, just knocked them all out. You know, if he can't... It takes a lot to kill him, as we find out later, so, yeah. Anyway, bottom line, that entire scene, just to show off Christopher Lambert, you know, fighting off. Or is it Lambert? I don't know. So, we have... I love how no one in this movie actually pretends to, you know... No one does anything about their accent. You know, you've got the German, the Roland, you know, clearly German. You know, it's in every single word he says. The, the German accent is just unmistakable. Roma Mitra, not entirely sure what her accent is, but there's clearly an accent there. You know, i not entirely sure what that was supposed to be. I like that this movie actually, you know, it's not trying to be historically accurate. We don't know exactly when it's taking place. My money's on post-apocalyptic, you know, and not just because I love that sort of thing. It, okay, just because of that. You know, it just kind of, we see these people using modern technology. There's no, like, hey, where'd you get that? You know, no, they just, that's just how it is. You know, you find out almost immediately. One of the first things you see is those, you know, masks that, you know, apparently provide oxygen to, the, the, yeah. I'm not even sure why they need that, you know. Does Grendel breathe?
breathe toxic fumes or something, whatever. The... I'm gonna skip ahead to the ending. I like when a movie actually has the guts to just kill everyone, but it does seem like, I don't know, it ends up feeling a little hollow. You know, he didn't really rescue anyone other than, I guess, the potential future victims, but the only two people making out, making it out of that castle are himself and Ronamitra's breasts. You know, that's it, you know, and then the three of them can go off and have more adventures. I mean, I guess even, you know, the young black guy who made him that hidden blade died, you know, we don't, I'm not sure we saw his body, but yeah, it just seems a little, I don't know, and it didn't really feel like it quite had the impact it seems like it maybe should have had. The blade itself, I thought that maybe they should have established better that it was trying to avoid, you know, people with swords, maybe, or something, or trying to disarm. I get the idea that, you know, if I just conceal my weapon, then it will think that I'm helpless, and that's it. But I think it would have helped to properly establish something like that, or for him to make reference to having used something like that before, some, a, a trick like that. I thought the movie did pretty well at just getting some emotion and drama into it, you know, the Roland thinking, Roland, you know, desiring Kyra and you know, that entire thing. That could have gone really emo and been really pathetic, but it wasn't, because it wasn't brought up that often, you know, there were two or three scenes where that's mentioned, and it's brief, and that's it, you know, that's also, the movie does not overstay its welcome. And, you know, Kyra herself, you know, when she reveals the truth about, you know, how she was the one who killed her husband because he was so horrible, and she thinks that Grendel is actually him. You know, I thought that was pretty smartly written. You know, it's like, it's battered wife syndrome. You know, even though she, you know, she was happy to be able to get rid of him, now she feels like she's being punished for that, even though it was, let's be honest, it was just, you know, the guy was a bastard. The... I love how, you know, for the succubus, for Grendel's mother, that, they just went ahead and did the, you know, what's more obvious than hiring an actual playmate, a playboy playmate, and having her look and act the part of a playmate. You know, she's just constantly seducing, you know. She doesn't even wear, she's really not wearing clothing. Basically, she's got like a see-through shawl, and that's it, you know. That was also something that my girlfriend and I noticed as we were watching the movie. Rona you know, outfit is essentially see-through, you know. I like the design on that creature, you know, the form that Grendel's mother takes there at the end. At first, I thought she was going to become like a giant bat, like it was... The, those things coming out of her were gonna become wings, you know, and it was like a big, you know, ancient vampire myth kind of thing. But she really doesn't look like anything. I mean, suddenly she's like spider-like. She's crawling on the walls a bit. And that was, you know, that was something where I could put my finger on, ah, they used inspiration from a spider. But on the whole, I don't know what that was, you know, it didn't look like anything I'd really seen. And that's pretty cool, and I think, you know, and they used it well, like with Grendel himself, you know, we don't see too much of them, they don't depend too much on them. You know, the climactic fight is, you know, between one person and one monster, that sort of thing doesn't necessarily work in a movie, that won't necessarily be exciting, you know, we haven't seen her in this form before, so suddenly, you know, we might have an idea from pretty early on that she's, you know, the bad guy, or, you know, but 
at the end there, and we haven't seen her fight until that point either, so, you know, there's not really a, that strong of an immediate, I don't know, emotional kind of grounding in it, but, you know, when you actually watch it, it's a fun fight, it's an exciting fight, you know. And I thought the, you know, the killing move was pretty clever as well. You know, he discovers that her blood is flammable, so he cuts her, you know, carotid artery and, you know, sends fire towards it, you know, so she'll burn completely because so much blood comes out of the carotid artery. And that, yeah, it, that was pretty cool. The, uh, there's almost too much B-movie goodness to really get into. I just love how, you know, the first, you know, they see Beowulf and it's like, you know, well, you know, if, we can always kill him later. You know, I, yeah, love that line. I thought that Lambert's hair was pretty cool, you know, cool design. I've seen, I don't know, a couple of movies with him. This is the one where he had the coolest hair, you know, it's like in the others, you know, like the long hair or just a not that interesting hairdo. This one, kind of cool. I suppose that's pretty much what I wanted to say about the movie. Yeah. Maybe just one more thing. I think the thing about Beowulf being the son of a god, you know, the half, whatever, you know, one god and one human. I believe that is, I don't know, maybe in the original poem, or it, it just, it seems familiar. Maybe they got it from another part of mythology. Anyway. That maybe did feel a little out of place because it's really the only mention of gods in the movie. You know, there are, there's the supernatural monster and all, but on the whole, it didn't really seem like they had a lot of mythology in there, you know. Which is not to say that it was, like, entirely scientific and they didn't, you know, like, they disbelieved, you know, why was... How is this monster explainable? You know, they did accept that, but there's still no mention of gods, no mention of anything supernatural other than the creature. You know, Lambert, Beowulf also does not regale us with tales of other creatures he's killed, really. About the whole, the, everyone is killed in this movie, I also wasn't entirely clear on if Beo, if if Grendel could make it into the, you know, the sanctuary area. Why had it waited so long to kill all those people? You know, I, I guess not long before that, Beowulf, excuse me, remarked, you know, it's excuse me, done playing games, you know, or something like that. But why? That was kind of just. Okay, so it's going to kill a lot of people, you know. Briefly more on that, on the whole a lot of people dead thing. Grendel's mother, after she killed, you know, everyone left in the movie, essentially. It seemed to me like she was trying to get Beowulf to sleep with her, you know, to... You know, eventually they, they fight, but... Before that, it really seemed like she, you know, wanted another Grendel, and she, you know, maybe it would become more powerful with him being a demigod. So, you know, and then when she sees that that doesn't work, or I don't know, maybe she was just trying to distract him until she could fight him, because I don't exactly know what it was, like, black, dark mist or something, going into her, enabling her to, you know, change into the... I liked, you know, you could really tell which shots were CGI and which were just, you know, close-ups of her in some makeup. But the makeup looked nice when they cut to those close-ups, you know. 
And actually, for a playmate, I didn't think her acting was bad, really. You know, it. she wasn't asked to do a lot, but she was threatening when she was supposed to be, and she was rather seductive, you know, the other 90% of the time she appeared on screen. The creature, Grendel himself, itself, I like that, you know, the there's proper build-up to seeing him, and, you know, the kind of... It's unclear if it can turn invisible. You know, how does it get, for example, into the sanctuary? You know, it, does it turn invisible and then just sneak in when the doors are open? Or can it, like... I don't know, I theorized that maybe it could go through walls. I read on IMDb that maybe it can, like, turn itself into mist or something like that, you know. With that said, I... You know, I tend to like not having a lot of explanation. I think this movie could have done with just a little more. I would have liked to know why Grendel suddenly stepped up his game. You know, and maybe also some kind of a motive, some kind of gain to, you know. Why was it killing the people at the outpost? What was keeping it at the outpost? You know, why didn't it go... You know, I get maybe, like keeping Hrothgar alive so that the succubus could continue to torment him in his dreams, that, you know, maybe makes some sense, especially if she somehow gets some power from that, which we're not really explicitly stated, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe there is an explanation. Maybe, you know, Grendel can't stray too far from his father or something, but it's not in the movie. We're not told in the movie why it's staying there. I, not that I noticed, anyway. And, you know, I mean, all the, you know, warriors outside, could they actually stop it? You know, Beowulf managed to kill it, but he is a demigod, and he's the only one. You know, everyone else who fights it either dies or is spared. And the same with, you know, the mother. Maybe also some kind of explanation for why, you know... Okay, so she has Grendel. Can she only have one child at a time? Or can she never conceive again? You know, why doesn't she try to make more? But yeah, I think that's it. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.